Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tune Review for tonight's Newcastle versus West Ham United preview. Uh, we will also be talking about Mr. Tonali, um, and uh, we'll start the show with that and uh, get that out of the way with before we look at the uh, the match on Saturday, of course, which is a lunchtime kickoff, 12.30. Match day live starts right here on the Tune Review at midday. Um, if you do enjoy tonight's show, guys, as usual, give it that huge thumbs up. As if you've jammed your finger in the door and it's just gone massive. Uh, just hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and of course, if you're new and you like what you see, please do subscribe. Uh, it is free to do so. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell, which will let you know when we schedule in our live shows or we upload any recordings. You can become a member of the Tune Review course by hitting that join button just underneath the uh, four of us. And you can, as usual, donate to the channel by hitting that uh, dollar sign, which is just at the bottom of the live chat. Good evening, people. Good evening to everybody. Hello. Hola. Uh, right, we're going to start with Tonali because, uh, you know, it, it, it seems like uh, that is the story. There is a poll up in the uh, it, it pinned in the chat, guys, if you want to take part in that tonight. It's basically a yes or no poll. Uh, will Tonali have his ban extended by the FA? Just simply yes or no. Uh, so we'll take a look. There's been quite a few votes already. Uh, so we'll take a look at that a bit later on in the show. Um, Sam, we'll start with you because um, I know Alex is going to be the voice of reason on this and and the voice of calm and and, and, and not sort of getting um, panicky about the situation. Um, but listen, the, the news broke and, you know, we were talking before the show, Billy was worried anyway. Um, when this betting scandal happened, and he was he was worried that he'd been doing it when he signed for Newcastle as well. well what do you make of it all this afternoon? Well, ha hardly panicking because we, we, we're surviving, we're, we're hanging in there. But it's just another huge blow. I don't think we get the double jeopardy rule where it doesn't count. I think mm. it's a, a new line of accusation and investigation and charges and. Yeah, he's he's going to get the book thrown at him. They they need they need to take some form of action, otherwise it's going to leave the door open. I don't think it's obviously not going to be as much as previously, but I do think there'll be some kind out some kind of extension. I would be astounded if they took zero action. Because mm. of course, Billy, it just means that if if they took zero action, uh, Brentford might have something to say on that regarding Tenali's ban. Now I know, you know. Initially, it was Tonali's bet in, in Italy, but he's all. It, it looks like he's been found to be doing it when he, he arrived here uh, and betting on the English games. So, does that mean that the FA turn around and say, "Well, you know, that ban was for what happened in Italy. We have to step forward and take some action as to what happened in England." Yeah, well, it was the Italian FA that charged mm -hmm. him for what happened in Italy. Um, mm -hmm. It's now the the English FA that are going to charge him for what's happened here. And he's, he's an addict. So it, it would be mental of people to think that he hadn't been doing it when he was over here. I mean, being an addict, that's what he's going to do. He's going to come over here and he's betting. You need to look at what he was doing on the pitch. Was there any dodgy yellow cards that he, he had? There's, I've seen pictures of one. That's for certain. Has he been betting on Newcastle United games? I know the one you're talking about, Billy, as well. And, and you said it. You you actually said it in the in the, in the the match review. Uh, that it looked a bit... Uh... Mm. Well, shall we say a bit dicey? Yeah, as if he bet on the Newcastle United games, that makes it a lot worse. Um, and probably worse than what happened in Italy. So, added to the fact that when have the FA ever done Newcastle United any favours? Never. I think he's going to get an extra ban, and, and it might be as long as the one he's got now. Mm. Uh, I mean, the Telegraph report, Alex, that he, he, he has been found to be betting on Newcastle games as well. Um, I mean... <laughs> You know, you can you can feel sorry for the lad up to a, up, up to a point. He's got a he's a, he's clearly an addict and clearly has a it's kind of mental health, I guess. But he needs help, doesn't he? And and I'm not sure another an extension for his ban will 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 help him in any shape or form, and it certainly won't do us any good. But you have a different take on this. You don't think that anything's going to happen. No, I I completely disagree with with both of the previous opinions. I think it goes against everything we've we've heard from all the journalists and the timeline um so it was discovered so october 12th was when all of this came out which is when he was first questioned in italy um and that was after he'd obviously been betting here so this is he's obviously i would assume that he's been open about everything the fa are aware of things it's probably yeah, that's, all, that's all been aired out it. and all been hang he, on well let me let me finish it though. has he been it. open about it that's the main thing you know has he actually been open about it 
we are. I was getting to that point. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's going to question. Well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I, I, I would imagine that he's been honest about that because he's been caught. I, I wouldn't imagine he would have hidden bits of it because it will come out. Um, and it, it got this all came to light in October. So it will have all been sorted. And the fact that every single journalist, whether it's Downey, Douglas, Hope, Edwards, every single one are all saying um, club expect FA to deal with case as one gambling period and ban unlikely to extend. That's mm. all of them that all have links and connections to the club, to the FA and know people and have friends in places that we don't have. Um, I think it's absurd to to go against that. I think it's way more likely to happen what everybody and all the journalists and all, all the people that have the connections are saying. Um, obviously, sometimes when journalists will go against each other when they're with transfers and they've all got different sources, mm. fight. It's a bit trickier to to pick through the you know the different conversations, but every all of them are all in unison on this. I and even if they do decide to give an additional ban, I think it would be just a token ban that's within the current timeline of this ban. Um, I, I, I can't see I can't see that happening. I mean, to your first point about the whole mental health issue, mm. absolutely. Um, it, you're taking away you're, you're stopping somebody from doing their job and what is their their talent or they've worked their life to do as a job, um, and you're not letting them earn their livelihood. And, and perform their role based on a, a, a mental health issue and an mm. addiction, which wouldn't be it wouldn't be done like that in any other industry or walk of life. You would get help for it and get mm. support. Um, so it's and it's it, it's a massive hypo- hypocrisy in football because everybody's sponsored by betting companies. It's enormous, enormously hypo- hypocritical, and it's. I think it'll be absolutely fine. I completely disagree with all of the other opinions. It, it goes against what everybody's saying. Um, the yellow card that you two were on about um, is that the one where he's coming off being substituted? Is that the one you mentioned you, you were on about, or a different one? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So in, in that video, you can clearly see Eddie Howe telling him to stop and don't come off yet to, to waste a bit of time. Um, so there, there's clear you can see that it's Eddie Howe that, that, inst- that instigates that, not Tanali in that specific case as well. On top of that, so I think there's logic and reason for everything we've discussed. And I'm not. I'm not worried at all. I think it's fine. Well, I think if they try and give him any sort of ban, I think the, the legalities of it will will come into play. And um, I, look, I, I'd, my opinion is, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I'm on the fence with it because I know, you kind of know what the FA are like and what they try and get away with, um, and make scapegoats out of people rather than trying to help people. Um, I I've seen a couple of people saying maybe they'd get like give him a you know, like a suspended ban, you know, if he was ever caught to do it again, he would get a, a ban plus the additional suspended one. Um, it's a world ban as well, the one he's on now. So, you know, that's not just for what happened in Italy, of course. It's a worldwide ban. Um, so, look, it, it's just come at a, a shitty time, hasn't it? That, that, that That's, I think, the main thing. It's, it's just come at a shitty time when we're not particularly playing very well. Um, results, you know, are iffy. We've got a big game against West Ham at the weekend. We're missing Miley, of course, another one out. Um, it's going to be a very difficult game, and it, it just puts the, the, the it just puts the club in the mire again, getting dragged through bad shit, Sam. And and and, and we could do without it. You know what I mean? We just want to move on. Get the, I just want this season out of the way. If I'm openly honest. Right. <laughs> I'm battle weary. I'm very battle weary this season. And and I, I, I wish I had Alex's confidence over this. I, I, I think I think again, just no, knowing our luck. <laughs> what what could it what could it be? I mean, do you know what? It could it could be that he gets banned from training. It could be that they say, do you know what, you you're not allowed to train now. Um so that that could be something that they sort of bestow on him as some type of punishment um i'm sure eddie being the leader that he is 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 offering all the support in the world um i think he's probably got the best manager for this type of problem that he mm. that he does have he's he's a young lad that needs to be supported through it he needs his, his you know manager and he's in the right people around him who can you know steer him in the right direction and you know hopefully the the fear that i have won't come to light um, Bill Burnett, um, yes, thank you for telling me that Alex has a brain about 15 times in the chat. I'm aware of that. And all this is is opinions, Bill. You know, Alex has his opinion that he thinks everything will be fine. And I perfectly respect that. The way, when he's explained it there, it makes perfect sense. 
Billy and Sam have their opinions as well. And my opinion is I'm on the fence with it. But yes, thank you for telling me Alex has a brain. So do the rest of us. Thank you very much. The second, but can I just say what Stato said? Okay, the journalists are saying the club expect. That's not their opinion. They're just saying what the club said. The club mm. expect there to be no further ban. That doesn't mean to me that there was isn't going to be one. Craig Hope's wording in his first tweet was, "It is thought that." Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> who, that's not who's it? Me. Who? They, they all seem it? to think yeah. it's fine, who, but there's, it? there's no concrete evidence as to yeah. is this is this whispers from the FA? Is this yeah. the club's expectations? So yeah, I'd agree with you there. There's no clear definition from the journalists. It's just general thoughts. Um, but obviously, they do know they do know people internally in both the FA and the club, mm. and I think they've got a better guess than we have. So mm. I'm just going by the the best thing we've got to go on at the moment, which is all the journalists. Oh, Indigo figure. Paul, no one respects others' opinions quite as angrily as you do. Here we go again. I'm not getting into all that crap. I said the piece on that yet last week, um, and I'm not even going to get into it now. We're, we're long gone with that kind of crap again. Uh, Paul Mason says, uh, well, can wait till Saturday, hoping for a win. My first visit to St. James's Park for my 50th birthday. Uh, can't wait. Uh, well, I hope it is exactly what you want it to be, uh, Paul. Uh, one thing that I think Alex is right on that the, the, the FA have said that it's it looks like they're counting everything as one occurrence so that both the betting in Italy and England so that that may sway it to uh, certainly not get any additional ban because obviously if the counter is one offense um, I think I saw a comment before you, you can't you can't hang a man twice for one offense you know yeah. you, you know what I mean you, you, so um I mean, it's a global to... ban that was issued as yeah, well, wasn't it? it he's is. not allowed to yeah. play for Italy. Yeah, he's not, it's, if, it's, you know. The Italian FA started it. FIFA yeah. then made it worldwide because Italy banned him. And then, of course, this happened over here. So it's a different, it is a different case, really, because the, it's under our jurisdiction. So we should see how it works. It's all about how they see it, I guess. It's it's, it's another case of arbitrary lines in sand, isn't it? Like yeah, Tony, Tony wasn't allowed to train initially, but. Tonali could, but different lengths of different. They, they, they've not got a clue what they're doing. They're just drawing random lines in sand again, and it's just mm. ridiculous. I mean, Bill's shouting at us now, saying, "Let me say again." The cl but Bill, you've just exactly what Billy's just said. You've just made yourself look like a castor. Let me say again: the club NUFC do not expect. And That's not saying... to say that there isn't going to be, but they don't expect one. You've just basically. Overruled yourself. Ian A saying same case, different authority. It's not the same case. It's different. It's, it's doing it while he's here, not doing it while he's in Italy. It's not the same case at all. Mm. Say so it's the same I charge. The timing's interesting, the though. If it if it if it was known before with the original set of allegations and charges that were brought forward, then why now? Why are we finding out about it now? If it was because it's declared? taken ages. I think this this came to light in in the November. Um, it was confirmed by the FA that they were looking into it as well in the November. Mm. And now we're, what, in end of March. So it's just taken a while. I don't know why it takes so long. But again, it, I think it's just just standard process. They just have to have to be seen investigating it thoroughly yeah. and make sure there was nothing too far, nothing beyond what was already known, basically, I think. But the thing is, I mean, look, I think the ban is big enough anyway, because if, it's, if they're all counted as one offence, a 10-month ban... Uh, is 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 absolutely enough, especially with the the, the 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 things that went on with his ban, Alex. You're talking about you know going yeah. to rehab and things like that. All additional stuff that was in his ban. Well, I think they to, will ban him, but I think they potentially will ban him. But they'll ban him included within, in the ban he's got included now. Included in the ban he's got now. Yeah. I think they'll. Yeah. And then it kind of, in theory, satisfies all criteria, and that they've been shown to have well, banned how, him. But how they're would not they going to extend though? it? We'll yeah, just say I, that I this is the ban. That. It was as a global ban and a ban from yeah. playing the UK um, or, or England or the Premier League or whatever it may be from yeah. X month to X month. But then it's included in the ban that he's already started anyway. I, I think I, I think that's a likely case as well. And that's what a lot of journalists have also stated. Um, it, it would be a bit odd to then extend that on the back of the existing ban and it starts to get awfully complicated. Then I think that would be, yeah. be almost too picky and would almost feels targeted then well uh, 
Tangi Zan- has Zaniolo a... still playing football, isn't he? Well, so... absolutely. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have mentioned that. Uh, Tangi says Tenali knew what he did before he signed on the dotted line for Newcastle and after he signed. Uh, I hope he gets help, but I'm very disappointed with Tenali at the same time. Uh, well, look, I, I think we've we've all had our say on how disappointed we are with Tenali, but the, the, the fact of the matter is he has an addiction. And we've spoke many times on this show about mental health and addictions and things like that. Um, and look, the guy needs support, right? We don't know what's gone on while he's been serving his band behind the scenes. He's been training, but apart from that, we don't know. We don't know what sort of rehab he's been doing, who he's been speaking to uh, to get the relevant help that he needs. Uh, we can only hope as supporters that he's getting that help, Sam, and that he's he comes back after his ban, a, a rehabilitated player, ready to just concentrate on his game. Yeah, and it's not it's it's not it's not going to be an easy journey either. And you know what? How how much more is not doing the thing that you love doing most in the whole world? Mm. That that's gonna that's gonna hurt as well. So this is this is a serious punishment. So like lessons uh, lessons will have been learned, but this isn't just something. Oh, I'll just immediately stop doing it. He, mm. he needs help and, and support, and I'm sure he'll get a glorious welcome return when when he does come back. Because let's face it, we need him. But it, it, it's about support. And as I said before, like, I'm, I'm sure Eddie's probably the best person to have around him at this time. I'm just curious to to see if they if, if they will extend it or do something different. I, I, would, I really hope that they don't. I really yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, Jake says, Miley was at the Metro Centre today and looked fine. Uh, yeah, Jake. The, 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 there's there's walking around the Metro Centre and there's playing Premier League football. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, the just uh, Dennis Skip says uh, the big six will be over the moon. The FA will love uh, and likely to find a way to extend the ban. Uh, Toon Dave, a member for two years and two months. Uh, evening all, been a little while since I've caught a live show. Hope you're all doing well. Back to proper football this weekend. How are the lads and lasses? Uh, indeed, we are back to football again. Uh, Anthony Clark says it will also depend on how Tonali comes across today, uh, following what the club have done to help him and what Sandro is doing to help himself. Uh, the FA will take that into consideration. Well, they have to, don't they, Billy? They've got to take what he's what he's already been doing. And what we, we don't know the ins and outs of what that ban, you know, his original ban, what the conditions were of that ban. You know, obviously he was allowed to keep training, etc. But would that be on the proviso that he did go to rehab, that he he, he attended certain places and uh, got himself sorted? I would assume that it would really. Well, we know it was. He had to go to Italy for. 12 weeks, I think, for, for, for that kind of thing over there. And also over here, too. The club will have him, you know, under, under lock and key, supporting him every step of the way. And it is an illness. And Paul Merson, was, I think he said it fine, because it, it obviously he's that no one had more experience than mm. being a gambling addict than Paul Merson is. And he said it's ridiculous yeah. to ban someone for being ill. And I, I tend to agree with that. Mm. Um, but hopefully he's cured now, because, it, you know, it's, it's a terrible thing to have an addiction. It really is. And, mm. yeah, it's, it's cost him 10 months of his career. And that's a massive thing for young football, isn't it? It's um, yeah. Let's hope it comes back better and better for us. Well, I, you know what it is. I, I, I think um, uh, there's some people in the chat saying that Tenali should take some responsibility. I'm sure he has. I'm sure Alex that he's took responsibility. Remember, we used to say that you know once the the band came in that he didn't seem to look too happy. His his head seemed to be all over the place. Just from this was from outsiders looking in, and uh, of course, but now. You know, we've seen a few training clips of him, you know, laughing away with Bruno, etc. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, that weight is off his shoulders now. He's he's sorted. He's got his ban. Now it's about looking forward and getting on with his career when he comes back. Well, I mean, we've got very little to go on other than Eddie Howe's press conferences where he's mm. mentioned Tonali's training um, and then the pictures. There's, there's reports that he's done therapy and... Um, or rehab, even that same thing, isn't it? In um, Italy, and that's going well. But it's all we don't know. We we don't have eyes on the inside. It's impossible to know. It seems like it's going fine. So fingers crossed, it is. Mm. I do think he looked a little bit better when everything came out. Anyway, um, mm. in, in games, I just want him back playing football because he's he's an he's an amazing player. And I don't think I don't really think anybody who's a Newcastle fan has seen the best of Sandro Tonali at all because no. he can do a lot more than what we've seen him do in a black and white shirt. Some of the stuff he used to do for AC Milan, he's he's an elite player. Um, and it's just just wait and see him play again. And I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be back for next season. 
Uh, it's interesting. That, uh, I saw a comment there saying that maybe if the FA are going to suspend him, it will the, the suspension that the FA will give runs concurrently with the one he's already got. Um, so that, th- that kind of uh, puts it into the one bracket as well, doesn't it? So, uh, But again, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with Tenali. Uh, I'm sure that um, whatever does happen, uh, they will release it at a perfect time for Newcastle United, no doubt, if it's bad news. But if it's good news, uh, we probably won't hear about it. It'll just brush over and be in, uh, you know, next month's fish and chip paper for all we know. But, uh, you know, Andy's saying there that Tenali knows that he failed his teammates. Um, look, I think failing his teammates, I mean, you look at AC Milan, you look at Newcastle, um, but, uh, you know, did he really feel, feel his teammates at Newcastle? I, I don't think so. Um, you know, I think we'll, we will see a very different Tonali when he comes back, obviously, but I, I don't think he's failed his teammates. I think when you're talking about an illness like that, it, you know, any illness, you can't really turn around and say you've failed people because it's an illness. You've got to be very, very careful. Um, I'm sure he's feeling really bad about it, Sam, but at the same time, you know, he has to brush this off himself and look forward, you know, try and get rid of the ghosts of it and just look forward now because it's an illness. I'm 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 sure with no with no doubt that there'll be an element of of guilt. Um, he he obviously understands the ramifications of of what what's actually happened. Now he's he's lost some really critical time out of his career where he could have been developing, wanted to come in and make a really big splash, mm. not not being able to do that. I think personally, I'm just really excited to see him back and wish him well with managing managing his illness in the future because these types of things they, they, they don't go away it's to be managed mm. moving forward with the right help and support and the you know the the tools so you know whenever the temptation does come a knock in he's he's got the right mindset to be able to to bat it off and just focus on what he loves which is playing football can't wait yep. to get him back and yeah hope i i think i think i think he will get some type of punishment handed down i don't think they're going to say all right good on you you've you've served your time but i i and now that the comments have been coming through it would make sense for something to run alongside it or the, mm. like maybe the extension i don't think they'll just go yeah okay fair enough i don't well time will tell time will mm. tell uh anyway it's time to move on now and actually but do lastly, just lastly yeah go on billy yeah yeah got to trust the fa to do the right thing and that's sorry the big, billy. Big thing for me. <laughs> You know what I'm going to say to you right now, don't you? Well, Trust and the FA in one sentence uh, is something that is very, very, very unheard of. Hence my negativity on the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we shall see. Uh, right. Uh, Newcastle back in action, of course, uh, against West Ham at the weekend. And as I said at the start of the show, uh, it is a 12.30 kickoff. Match Day Live will start here at midday. Um, it is a very, very big game, this for Newcastle United. Um News has come out that, of course, uh, Alex Murphy and um, Mr. Harrison have been training with the first team. Uh, does that indicate, Alex, that they might play a part in towards the end of the season? Or is it just for experience? Well, I think it's because it was internationals. So, yeah. I, I, no. If, if it was any other week, yeah, definitely. But the, I think it was because it was the, the Dubai break and, you know, internationals. So, they've called some youngsters up to that training camp. I think that's all it is. I don't think it will give us any indication as to whether they're going to play. Mm. Um, I think there's definitely a chance, especially with Miley being injured, there's definitely a chance that you could see like a Harrison or somebody like that on the bench, 100%. Mm. Um, but I think I think the case was, was they were going to train with the first team anyway, regardless of whether Miley was going to get injured or not. They just needed bodies, right? So, yeah, yeah. And they don't look like they're miles away from first team level or at least being involved with it. So, mm. and Harrison obviously came very highly regarded. So, um, yeah, I mean, especially with Botman as well, it, it just makes sense, doesn't it? Harrison, because Miley's out the squad and Alex Murphy, because Botman's Botman, now gone. Yeah. So it's yeah. just two players in who are young, train with the first team and they're just an additional option if required. Uh, now, obviously, Billy West Ham have some very, very strong players in their lineup, uh, mm. players that can hurt you. Uh, but it depends which West Ham turn up. I suppose we keep seeing this every game, do we? We say it depends which West Ham turn up. It depends what Newcastle turn up. But Newcastle are against it on Saturday because of the injuries now. We, you know, we, we, we've we lost Miley now. We, you know, Botman's not going to be there. Um, it is taking a stretch again, you know, on the squad. Um, 
Who do you think would replace Miley? I don't think Molly wasn't in the team anyway, was he? <laughs> it's just going to be Sean again, isn't it? <laughs> Simple oh, as that. yes, I forgot about that, yeah. <sighs> Sam? We all <laughs> sigh. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, oh. And you know what? Like, I, credit to the lad. You know, he's he is injured. He's struggling. And not to mention that, but his confidence must be shot as shit. Like, it, it, this injury is really, really harmed him I, I i think it is and no i don't think anybody's looking forward to, to seeing him play but I, I i do feel for the lad because he's trying to take one for the team because it, it it's like how, how many options do we do we actually have here i would love mm. to see some some of the young team on uh, on the bench for sure like there for just rotation just give us some options you know if we're ahead then you know give that give them 10 15 minutes at the end if we if we if we're looking control mm. Um, Toon Gamer has a very good question, Alex. Uh, both fullback positions who plays right back if Kieran's fit, and who plays left back? Because what I've seen of uh, Lewis Hall over the international period, this kid is a talent and a real talent, and uh, I don't understand why he's not in the team. Uh, uh, you know, he, he was brilliant for the England youth setup, and uh, you know, he's just full of confidence as well. But where does he go? I think it depends on on fitness of everybody. Um, you're going to have Kraft will obviously be an option, and then you're going to there'll there'll be Trippier and Livermento will be assessed. You've got Dan Byrne and Lewis Hall, so there's yep. and even Matt Target returning, but unlikely to get a start. But you've got, I mean, you're asking me the question. You you're asking me to answer the question. Not a clue, mate. There's six options there for the two fullback roles. Um, I think the most likely. Is going to be Trippier or Livermento over Kraft, I think, just by general process of elimination from what Eddie's normally picked. Mm. So, and then, I mean, they've both been out of the training camp, haven't they? So, it's, it's behind closed door stuff. So, they will know more than we we do, obviously, if, if it's Trippier or Livermento that have recovered yeah. enough and have done well enough in training and are ready to go. And I think he'll make that decision based on fitness more than who it is. Um, and then obviously at left back, well, it'll be down burn, won't it? So, <laughs> no, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah, uh, you know, if you know, Alex is saying down burn, then it probably is going to be. Dan I think Lewis Hall's getting closer, but well, of course, there's, there's Matt, Matty Target's supposed to be close to full fitness as well, so he does it's have options there. Going against him, don't worry, he's not that, not that far. Oh, let's not, yeah, I mean. Billy, you know, let's be honest here. We've 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 sort of had a, a little dig at Eddie Howe, you know, over the months for putting Dan Byrne against very speedy wingers. Now, I don't think, you know, certainly Bourne for me, he's not the quickest out of people that he's faced in the past. But this this guy is talented as well. He's got some skill about him. And is Dan Byrne the right person to go against Jared Bourne? No. <laughs> Simple answer. No. Yeah. What I'd do personally is play Trippier right back and Livermento at left. That'd be my that'd be my choice. You play Livermento left back? I would, yeah. Absolutely would. Absolutely would. I think you need a, a good a strong defensive player. I think Livermento is a better defender and has more pace than Dan Byrne and than Lewis Hall. Although Lewis Hall mm, his left foot is something else. I think he, he he's probably better served further up the pitch. I'm hoping we're going to kind of coach him into that, that kind of role. His left foot is an absolute wand, I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, another sort of a question, uh, Sam, as if uh, we were looking at the sort of defence. Does Dan Byrne start at centre-back? No. God, no. I'd rather the tea lady start at centre-back. I, I need some... <laughs> I know that was that was harsh even for me. I, I I think I'm just I'm just fatigued. I'm just fatigued from 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 seeing him from seeing him there. I think I would just like to. I I, I really like Billy's suggestion. Um, I would I would be really really keen to see to see Tino there and and just see mm -hmm. how that would work. Um, have have Hall for some rotation. I definitely need to get Hall in more games get him some more game game time because every time i've seen him he's just sparks and um i really like seeing his, his attack and his press and i think that's really something that we need um 
that's where I'll be going. But please, God, please don't stop. But he will. He will. He absolutely will. Oh, dear. I mean, look, look, I want to see a bit of excitement on Saturday. And uh, listen, one thing we don't have is a very good record at lunchtime kickoffs either. Um, it's pretty abysmal record at lunchtime kickoffs. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm in two minds whether, you know, how confident I am for this, Alex. But uh, you got some graphics there for us? I have indeed, yeah. Uh, give me one second well, and I'll bring graphic. them up for you. <laughs> Lots of people love a graphic. Yeah, we do. We do. We do a great job with these, Alex. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's Trot Mob, but yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but Trot Mob and Sofa, Sofa Score have a predicted lineup already, which they, they normally don't have out on a Thursday. Maybe maybe they've got nothing to do because it's the international break. They've got it done well, early. Alex, it is an early kickoff, isn't it? So, you know, maybe they've just thrown it in because it's a, a 12.30 kickoff. But the, sometimes, these, yeah, sometimes these teams are a little bit wayward. Well, this is their predicted lineup. They they think that it's obviously going to be uh, this back four, which I think is very likely with Scherer at left centre half, the Cells as the right side, and, and Livramento starting, and then the rest of the team kind of picks itself. I think the debatable one is is Murphy or Miggy. Obviously, they've I, I checked, and I don't, there's no I don't think there's any been there's been any Paraguay stuff for Miggy. So I think him and Murphy have been training with a team. No, so, no, he came home early, Alex. He came home That's early. Okay. He came home early, but there didn't. There wasn't any reason oh, for him yeah, to come home. Early. I don't know yeah. whether it was just a training camp. I do remember. Um, that, yeah. So I think he's just come home early from the training camp. So, well, this is this is the proposed West Ham lineup. Um, Sofa Score disagrees with this, so they think it's going to be Pakata on the left with uh, a midfield three of of Suchek, Phillips, and Ward Prowse. It's definitely not going to look like this uh, with Bowen Antonio up front. Yeah, it's very much what we would. What we did would expect, yeah. Um, and the sofa score lineup thinks that Kudus is man is going to pull through, even though he's a doubt on both websites. But they yeah, seem to think that Kudus is probably going to play. Uh, that's more terrifying. I don't want Bowen and Kudus. That's very balanced. Um, it's it's very attacking. As long as it's Phillips doesn't. Quick. <laughs> well, there's no, there's no Ward Prowse in this lineup, but but those those mm. three behind Antonio is is frightening. Like that's that's terrifying. Um, you know, Jamal's going to have to concentrate, no silly mistakes. Um, and then the midfielders as well. Bruno's going to have to make sure he sits, no wandering off. Sean's going to have to make sure he's he's getting proper tackles in because these three, if if they start, if they get going, these three are absolutely terrifying. You know, we've been fine against West Ham in, in recent seasons, but they haven't had all three of these starting at once in good form. So we've managed to avoid them. But I think I don't think Paqueta played the last time we played West Ham and then the one before yeah. that, I think he managed to score in it. Hmm. Um, so a little bit scared of that. Well, apparently, um, Alex, Miggy, the Paraguay was supposed to play a Russia, but it got postponed. So uh, I don't know whether he you know, came back early because of that or whether they had a they decided to have a couple of days training camp. I don't know. Hmm. Um, well, they seem to think Trippi yeah. is definitely going to be out, by the way. Um, and they're obviously... Maxwell Corne, who I keep forgetting exists. We we loved him when he first came into the Premier League and then just went oh, to we West were desperate for Newcastle signing, weren't we? We did a few transfer yeah, shows. It was a couple of years ago. Yeah. He's just vanished. He was he was amazing when he first sort of what was it? Was it Burnley he was at? And he was really, really good for Burnley, and he's just disappeared. Mm. Alvarez suspended. So it's more likely we're going to see Ward Prowse or Suchek Phillips. I feel like that's I feel like Phillips getting a start is a bit considering how poor he's been. I think that's a bit harsh dropping Ward Prowse in this eleven, to be honest. You could just, what, you could just see Calvin, it though. Why has Calvin Phillips and Kurt Zim got the same shirt number? Oh, sofa score. Yeah, the ball. Naughty, naughty. Yeah, but you just imagine Calvin there. Phillips is going to bang a hat trick on Saturday. You know, after it just, <laughs> after we've slagged <laughs> him off and he's had such a no. rotten start at West Ham. You just fear, don't you? It's just typical Newcastle. Looking forward uh, to the, the centre-half that plays for West Ham. You're saying his name on Saturday, Paul? Um... Who's that? You may have to go back to the Stato, the number 15. Oh, I forgot. Mavropanos. No, I'm too bad. Constantinos Mavropanos. There you go. I Top thank it. you very much. I've been I've been learning. Uh, by the way, Harpal, yes, uh, he's saying Russia, are you sure? Uh, yes, Russia actually played in a couple of friendlies. Um, I don't think the, the, the friendlies are particularly... I think they're allowed to play friendlies for some strange reason. I know they had a home game against somebody else the week before, so... Um, but um, yeah, uh, apparently the because a bit ironic. Well, no, I, I mean Mason's mentioning there obviously the the, the awful terrorist attack in Moscow, that, which uh, I don't know whether the, the game was postponed because of that. I think that that would make sense. I heard rumors that they blamed us for that. 
But yeah, yeah we don't do politics. We're, 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 what, the two of you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did say that there was going to be some, uh, some, some, some dark cars pulling up outside any of our houses for what we said in the past. So you just never know, do you? Really? Let, let's let's not go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Back to, um, back to the review. What, what are we doing with this? Don't this you get all bloody raff, posh and political, Sam. I've heard you off camera. <laughs> what are we doing with this riffraff? Uh, oh, so, Livermento or Trippier? I mean... Well, look, if he if he picks Trippier and drops Livermento, I'll be angry. I'll be well, quite pissed, to be honest. I don't know no, about you guys, but I would be really pissed. I wouldn't I wouldn't be angry at that. It's Kieran Trippier. He's With everything he's done and how good he's been... You, Trippier has also got a right to play. He's a leader. He's the on-field captain when Lascelles isn't there. He's got the most assists in the squad this season. I love Livermento as well. Yeah, but you, you I'm can't just not throw sure your toys out of the Alex, To be honest, uh, I, listen, Trippier fit brilliant. Fine, so, like, fine. He deserves to walk straight into to most teams. Kieran Trippier with who he is. Guys, what do you reckon, uh, Billy Sam? Do, do you think it would be fair to drop Livermento and bring Trippier back? Well, I don't think it'd be. I, I don't think it'd be fair, but I think it would happen. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's not fair. I agree, it's not. It wouldn't be fair on Tino, but it's Kieran Trippier. Especially if he keeps Dan Byrne in the side, like Billy said, he would rather see Livermore maybe move that side. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Keep 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 them both on. Like get 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 Byrne on the bench. Um, Which, should we do this? Yeah, make yes, everybody happy. Absolutely. Let's do that. There we go. Tino left. Yeah, and I don't, right. think, I don't think you can pick many others really. I mean, Anderson. Does Anderson get in this starting lineup? Well, for me, he gets ahead of long staff every day of the week, but that's not going to happen either, is it? Well, Anderson's probably had a good a good run in this recent camp, mm -hmm. so he's yeah. probably a lot closer to match fitness. Probably not one hundred percent there, but a lot closer than he's been recently, which will be good. So he's an option. He'll probably replace Woolock, you'd imagine. Um, yeah, it does uh, Lawrence makes options. a good point as well, Alex. Uh, that obviously we have Everton on Tuesday night, and then Fulham next Saturday. So the, the you know we've got three games in a week here with a a small squad again. Well, I mean, there's rotation, so. Obviously, if Livermento and Trippier both start, I would probably say they would both start again on Tuesday. Um, Kraft could come in as a starter somewhere. Anderson would probably come in as a starter again somewhere. Mm. Uh, you've also got Miggy and Murphy can swap. So there's a little bit of rotation. But there's not much wiggle room. Uh, obviously, I've not dragged Hall over here. Where is Lewis Hall? No, that's Lewis. I haven't even, I haven't even got one. Is, is Barnes alive? Is Nobody he, knows. I, 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 I would expect, I would hope that one of the journalists I've just, tomorrow. I've just somebody picked Barnes. that up somewhere, but we've been bored of just following the news. I, I don't know if he's is he fit? Is he? I know he got re-injured again. Is that is that fixed? Is he? Nobody can we knows. talk about him? I'm when not I sure. checked today, it said he was injured. So he's injured, right? Well, he can he can he can go right at the top then. Um, <laughs> It's just Alex a, Murphy a maybe on the bench. Let's drag Alex Murphy over here. Sanusi was an experiment from a previous match. You can you can go back, Sanusi. Sorry, buddy. Um, no Tanali. We need a Lewis Hall. What's Lewis Hall's number again? I always forget. Mm. Everybody's forgotten. Uh oh. Quiz Come time. Come on. Come on in the chat. What's Lewis Hall's number, guys? You must have seen him, have we? Come on. <laughs> oh, we don't, we don't, is. don't see him very often. Yeah. Oh, then Paul, what is it? Come on. I'm, to live. Really put to I'm not, not going to check. We have to. We're, we're supposed to be fans. 20, I think. 20. It is, it is 20. Right. Of course it is. There you go. I knew I was right. Um, <laughs> we've got a super chat coming from Chris Lynch, who says, according to you, Claret and Blue, uh, earlier, kudos players. Uh, we cannot make mistakes and leave Burn on the bench. Uh, sorry, we cannot make mistakes. So leave Burn on the bench and start Livermento at left back. Uh, Buzz down under. You should be that. shot. Terrible. <laughs> Fubar Steve said 69. I think Fubar <laughs> Steve's just talking, you know, dreaming about anything but football at the minute. Um, ben says, I think Alex Murphy should start with uh, Hall, Tino and Cher, but it won't happen. Mm. Um, I, I don't think Alex Murphy's ready for a start in the Premier League. Oh, I don't know. Well, I, I don't, I don't think Eddie Howe thinks he's ready for a start. No, I mean, um, look, we watched him in pre-season, didn't we, lads? And, we, you know, mm. to, to be honest, he was, right. the friendlies that we did, um, he played really well. Yeah. yeah, and he played at left back and one of them. He played really well there, too. He did, indeed. Well, I mean, rotation for... If we have to rotate for Fulham, does he rotate the fullbacks? Potentially not. I don't think he does. I think he might pick Dan Byrne against Everton because I think they're the... Bit of a lump and hit it merchant team, aren't they? I think he might see yeah, who's, who's Everton's right mid. 
is it is it McNeil? Is it Harrison? It's McNeil or Harrison. It's one of the two. Harrison. Um, so which which winger are we more scared of? Jack Harrison. Oh, the whole yeah. about well, I, look, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's Jack Harrison. I think Billy's right, though. Everton are more certainly. I mean, it's at home, isn't it, against Everton? So, um, mm. I can see it very much being a hoof ball situation, like Billy said, with uh, with with Daish. So, I'm not particularly worried about wingers running at defenders in that game. It might be a game to play, Dan Byrne. Um, so the next game rotation could possibly be that or that as the back four. Uh, well, let's not forget Emil Kraft as well, guys, because he's 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 yeah, but he's very much on the door. choice right back, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sam, would you play long be... stuff on Saturday? No, um, I, I have a feeling that he will, though, because uh, this is this is just what Eddie does. Um, how how long can that ankle possibly hold out on injections? Is it not worth you know taking the punt and you know ch changing it up a little bit? Give it giving Anderson a a run out or, or even so let us have an early sub like take him off at half time because there's a point where we're just not considering you know him anymore we're just using him well yeah i mean uh, uh, alex uh, uh, terry's getting a little bit annoyed because you've got botman on the substitute side and he's injured but there's my right. as well i mean how are you guys i mean uh, you know like, uh, alex spends a lot I of time putting these things together. i honestly he's can't very... i can't keep up with it the amount of injuries we get exactly. I, it's, it's not enough time to move everyone over it's it's crazy. Jan's kicking off because you had Lascelles as number two. I changed it. I changed it. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, me. I mean, if people have like Hawkeyes. It's, well, it's who, who else gets on this bench then? Obviously, Carrius, but I'm I'm not making a Carrius thingy. He can That's he can stay over the side. Well, I'm just going to yeah. say, where's Dubravka's confidence, guys? Because well, after that Slovakia goal, and then, uh, and then I mean, and then also <laughs> withdrawing from the squad for unspecified reasons. Yes. What is that all about? Exactly. I mean, what is going on? Uh, is he just embarrassed that he conceded a goal after six six uh, seconds and then decided to go home? Patch has fancied a bit of Dubai rather than play for Slovakia. Well, I mean, I don't blame him for that, to be honest. But uh, Is he going to Dubai? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Surprising. Um, Tom says you need a hospital graphic on the sideline. Yeah, like a, a, a little... Uh, building that they can all sit in on the right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little cross on the top. Jesus Christ. How many um, are we allowed on our bench now? How's it working uh, in the Premier League? Seven, is it seven, 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 seven. I don't know. I'm, there's nine in the Bundesliga because I'm doing a football manager save. I, I can't remember what the Premier League is. Oh, um, speaking of that, Alex, I have just started my new Cassie United career on Football Manager. Ooh. Um, and y you know the weird thing is, you know who my first game was against? Who? What's that? Leon. In a friend, how weird is that? Leon. Because I said I was going to take oh. Leon on, but then I went. Ooh. I thought I can't. I can't start the game and just not be Newcastle first. You know what I mean? That's just. Um... Well, I, I've just signed somebody that I met. Um, so I, I, I sold a bit beer for the, one of the young strikers for Hoffenheim to Crystal Palace for about fourteen million, and signed Luka Jovic to replace him for about a million. And Luka Jovic, I met outside St James's Park in the summer because he was playing for Fiorentina in the Seller Cup. So and nobody recognised him. I was like, oh, Luca, can I have a selfie? Yeah, you're cool. Had a little 20-second chat with him and he wandered off. Nobody else bothered him. It's like, guys, this guy played for Real Madrid for two seasons. You're all ignoring him. Alex, I meant to Couldn't tell believe you, it. I've sent, I've sent an email off to try and get somebody on the channel. Well, not Luka Jovic, is it? No. Luka Modric? Machenlacher. <laughs> You are joking. I'm not. I've sent Finn, an email off. Finn Luca. And, uh, you know, I've said if you need to know how well he's respected <sighs> on this channel, I can send you a video clip. I mean, um, I mean, I mean, this is well off topic for people who aren't absolutely off topic of the channel. But, but yeah, people who have been here for a long time, this guy is is folklore on the Toon Review. Yes. Um, I don't know if Sam remembers this guy. <laughs> I, I had a meltdown in preseason a couple of years ago because Lascelles got beaten up by this guy i think meltdown is a bit kind alex you 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 had a complete and utter <laughs> breakdown so this um, guy was like 21 at the time right playing for 1860 munchen in the third tier of german football <laughs> and lascelles got bullied by him absolutely bullied and i pronounced this guy's name on stream and everybody lost their <laughs> horses I, bananas well, I mean, knickers I mean, it, it was it was ridiculous. It was just the way you um, said it, though, Alex, because it was just... Can we have a ways... rendition? Can you give me a, a rendition? I mean, I'm sure Paul's got the video somewhere. We can, uh, he'll pull it up for another stream. Yeah. yeah, 
How's he doing? How's he doing? He scored. How many goals has he scored? He scored four goals this year. I mean, he's in the third tier. Are they still in the third tier? Get him signed. Get him signed. Maybe he's not. What if he he doesn't speak English, Paul? Well, that's what I've asked. You know, I mean, I mean, can any of you speak German? I mean, Alex, you know, you're a man of many mysteries. Mm, unfortunately, not. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't let Billy do it because it would be offensive. No. German. <laughs> yeah, German. no, I have O level German. I have, you know. Yes, but O level in pornographic German doesn't count, Billy. No. Um, Sam, what about you? <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> can you speak German? I can speak pornographic German, yes. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah well, schnell, schnell. That wasn't the bloody question for you, Sam. Fix me. Oh, my God. I, I don't know where this show's gone. Alex, please <laughs> bring, bring it back. Bring right, it back. right. So, right. We, that was a massive tangent. Oh, yeah. Sorry, everyone. Um, <laughs> right. So, I guess we're picking this 11. Again, we're, we're, we're kind of I speculating here because Eddie Howe is quite, is quite able to pick an 11 on a Saturday and the yeah. same bloody 11 on the Tuesday. So this might all be for nothing. However, there's decent rotation there. You would expect whoever starts at right wing on Saturday, whether it's Murphy or Miggy, the opposite will start or well, the other one will start on the, on the Tuesday, yeah. potentially. Um, you've then got Anderson is in for a shout of coming in and starting somewhere on this left kind of side. Some people saying, is he going to come in and replace Longstaff? It's possible, but he never he's never really been playing on that eight. I think we saw him once in a preseason a couple of years ago playing the right-sided eight. So he came back back, back from Bristol Rovers, um, played a little bit at left wing, and then Eddie Howe transitioned him to try and be a midfielder. And he plays here, generally, and only here. Um, oh, and that's, no. that's kind of it, unless we think Kraft or Target are going to get some shots no, on there on Tuesday. No, but no. I think it's unlikely. I, I mean, look, we'll cover Tuesday when we come to it. But... The hall, the, but... You know, Tuesday, Monday night, we'll do the the uh, the preview. So you think that. burn against Everton? So let's take burn off. Yeah, simply think because uh, like I think you. Billy's right. It's uh, you know, Daesh away from home tends to be hoofball. I think it, it like makes burn sense. Both, you know, he's going to. Well, thanks, Billy. Um, by the way, uh, a couple of comments. Uh, Jordy Rick says, uh, "Oh my God, what if he sent Paul and Billy to the cooler?" <laughs> Um, well, I mean, hope no. Hope, hope Are we not. happy with Isak playing 90 minutes twice, by the way, in about four Probably days? not, but who else? He's played for it? Sweden as well, a load, so I'm a bit yeah. nervous about that. Yeah, look, I mean, Isak, interestingly enough, uh, Anderson did an up front, funny experiment. Uh, it could be, but Isak did a, an interview while he was away with Sweden, and part of the interview he said that he felt that he'd been rushed back in a couple of games. And when I read that, I thought, "Oh, that's interesting." But then he went on to say, "Because of the other, because of the injury crisis, he's he's had he's had to come back earlier, um, and and play a lot longer than it probably would, you know, had he picked these injuries up and we had another striker, he wouldn't be rushed back so quickly." Which I found very interesting, because uh, clearly some games Isak hasn't looked fit. Um, I, I just hope he's he's back to all cylinders firing me because when he is. We, we, I still don't think we've seen the very best of Isak. I don't know about you guys. I just think we're yet to see the very best. 100%. Absolutely. Whenever we start, whenever he plays and, you know, you think, oh, it's, it's, we're going to see something special or a nice win a game. He's, getting, he's been getting injured, hasn't he? So, you know, to get a long run of games where he's consistently doing it, mm. hasn't been able to do it yet. Could say that about the whole start eleven as well. <laughs> yeah. this season, and I think it's interesting the, the context in, in which he said that, you know, there there is a language mm. barrier, so we do need to take that into consideration as well. And he didn't say I've been pushed back from the team. It could be his own will and want to get back and support the team. So I don't I don't particularly think that we've we've seen it. I don't think that it particularly means anything. So I just hope he can really you know, to, to just get it, get it, get it, get passes into him. If we can just get some precision to him, like mm. serve him the ball. He just he needs more service up front. Serve him the ball. He it's does like a plate, like a like a it's plate a, flying across silver the Silver platter, silver Absolutely. service. That's with like white glove experience is what that lad needs. Just get him the ball. <laughs> Steady on. What the hell's white glove experience? I don't know what that is. It's a, it's a, it's a silver. Billy, silver have you had some white glove white experience glove. in it? I bet he has many years ago. Yeah, absolutely, oh, yes. I was going to say Google it, but please, please don't. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's even worse. Alex, rescue us again, please. Uh, Jared Bowen with 14 goals in the Premier League this season, which is really, really good. It's more than sort of your you Gordon and Isak have got for us. So he's absolutely on fire at the moment and deserved oh. his England um, places. To be fair to him. Kudus and Suchek with six apiece. 
Uh, Suchek is the big lump. The big Czech lump does get involved. Um, he feels like it feels like he's been around for just forever, Thomas Suchek now. Uh, and then assists Ward Prowse with seven. I mean, that that's just standard for, for James Ward Prowse, isn't it? Yeah. Kufal, surprisingly, having a decent uh, return from fullback, maybe a bit under the radar for certain people. Don't see him shouted about in the media. Um, and Pakatar with his five, all all quite scary. Um, they're doing all right. Uh, let's not forget they pumped uh, five past Freiburg at home the other week. So yeah, they when they switch that. it on, they're not uh, they're not bad at all. Um, in terms of how they're rating versus other teams in the Premier League, they are ninth in the league for goals per game at one point six, sort of middle of the pack. Fourteenth uh, for goals conceded, so they're conceding a lot of goals, which is nice to know. But so are we. So this could end up being another one of those silly games where it's two apiece, three apiece, God knows what. Uh, XG down in 13th. So, yeah, I mean, statistically, they're very middle of the park in terms of goals for and against. Average possession, well, there you go. There, there's the David Moyes team. That's why they have a huge camp. Well, I say huge camp. I'm not a Hammers fan, so I don't know. But I, I do see lots of grumbling and gripes in the Hammers community about David Moyes and the style of football that they play. It's very much the modern, or modern day Sam Allardyce. I guess they're both from the same era anyway. But similar gripes about the style. Um, that he, they're never going to get any better than they are now, roughly. But then there's the other argument, oh, well, they've won a cup and they've got great players. So it's a little bit of a division there in the fan fan base. Um, what else? We've got 13th for XG, 13th for big chances missed, 12th for big chances created. And there's us with 90 in second place. So we're really good at creating chances, which is <laughs> for some reason mid-table. Uh, shots on target, 16th. Yeah, it's just a case of being very, very clinical. I mean, just out of curiosity, uh, if we go on to FB ref, I wonder what um, Jared Bowen's XG is for his 14 goals. Um, uh, yes, everybody. Bowen. Alex is still yet to update his Google Chrome. Uh, so as as I suspected, from nine XG, he's got 14 goals. So he's running hot by about five goals. Bit, so yeah. their, their chance creation and just general data has them around mid-table but there's a lot of quality in there and they're scoring and doing a lot better than they technically should on paper. Um, which is testament to players like Jared Bowen that they're just clinical because they're breaking the XG model. Doesn't mean it's sustainable though. Over a long enough period of time, XG always come back, comes back to bite you unless your name is Ronaldo or Messi. So, or Jamie Vardy for some reason is the only other outlier in the XG model. Um, so we've got to be careful because they are a good side and they have that terrifying... Um, terrifying middle three behind Antonio. Antonio I'm less scared of, but oh. he's still a lump and he's still dangerous. Um or, or chunk, shall we say chunk? But I'm, I, I'm terrified the chunk's back, but I'm I'm just terrified of that middle three of oh. if they can get if they can get Kudus on the pitch as well, I'm terrified of that. Um oh. Kudus with Paqueta and Jared Bowen is terrifying. Um, we've got a new member, Jordy Rick. I think that's a renewal, but uh, thank you, Jordy Rick. Welcome back to Members Club. And he's also sent in a super chat uh, saying, great show, lads and Sam. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, right. Uh, well, listen, I, I think we're all agreed on the on the team. I don't think we need to give our predict our teams, do we? Because I think we're all pretty much... Uh, it's just fullback roulette at this point, isn't it? Yeah, it's, of course it is. It, it, fullback it's... roulette. Who plays right wing? Well, the full the fullback roulette normally for left back lands on Dan Byrne literally every spin. I mean, you could put your house on it, really. Um, but we'll see. Listen, one thing before we do the score predictions. Lucas Paqueta, right? And I'm going to say Paqueta because I absolutely hate Paqueta. Paqueta. They I do put I, a lot of emphasis on the commentary, don't they? Yeah, they do absolutely. It. And it does my napper. Seriously. And it, it's a great pass. A, a through ball by Paqueta. I mean, they really do go for it. Like, Paqueta. I mean, is it Paqueta or is it Paqueta? I like it. It's a bit of enunciation. Ugh, you know, I give, you it some, give it some grit. Just call yeah. it Paqueta and be done with it. Whatever I mean, it is, he's dirty. Is he? No, he's a very yeah. dirty player. He should be sent off. <laughs> he's a dirty off. player. He Did you not see him off against England the other night? Yeah, he was. Oh, he was terrible. I mean, he should have been sent off. Let's be Absolutely honest. Absolutely, he should have been sent off. Countless, countless. He'll but probably I, I, behave I, himself a little more. But I don't uh... really. I've seen West Ham a few times, and I don't really. I haven't seen him be that dirty for, for West that's Ham. That's David. That's David Moyes and Southgate. Uh, uh, not Southgate. Bloody, he's not bloody English. Um, yeah. It's it's how he's deployed for Brazil versus how he's deployed for West Ham. Um, yeah. He was asked to do a very different role for um, for Brazil in terms of being a combative, ratty, 
eight. They were asking asking him to play almost a Joe Linton role, mm. and he can't do it. That's why he doesn't do it for West Ham. He, he's not. No, like, are he's we, are we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, are we looking forward to the clash against Bruno? Absolutely, hundred percent. I mean, Bruno was fantastic the night. Really was. Dominated the game. Ran the game for Brazil. Best player on the pitch. I didn't see that. You know what I mean. I, I, I mean, we've we've had a, we've chatted about this. I didn't see Bruno running the game. I, I, I'm not. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Bruno. Did it? Did he run the game for Brazil? Because I'm not. I'm not sure. He played the six. Well, much, much better role than what does for us. I've got to be honest. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It, it was the choice yeah. of midfielders that they had. He needed for, for for Brazil to challenge us in the midfield. They needed Douglas Luiz. And Bruno, they needed a bit more umph to challenge us. Um, he he was kind of having to do a lot of, you know, we had more of the ball. We we did have a more dominant midfield, which is lovely to be able to say. But yeah. um, I mean, I've actually got Bruno up here against us. us Bruno dropped a seven point two on Sofa score, and yeah, he was yeah he was solid. Nineteen out of sixteen ground jewels, ninety one percent pass accuracy, three key passes. Bruno was fine well, against it's us. It's funny because. Niall says Bruno ran it easily. Yeah, then so. uh, Bruno was Brazil's best player. Uh, Paul Taylor didn't think he did. Agent Tech said yes, he did. Uh, Baz Down on says I'm with you, Paul. Uh, Michael says, you know, yes, Bruno made it look easy. Uh, no, I felt Bruno didn't impact the game in the way I expected. So, you know, it, it's weird, isn't it? Because he gets certain like different opinions, and it's. I think their midfield balance was off, which didn't didn't show Bruno in the best light. I mean, I thought Paqueta was dreadful. He, he was, was absolutely yeah. dreadful. Mm. Um, but, hey, I mean, you know... He's, we he's, still bloody he's, lost. He's better, well, <laughs> we did. Uh, Ronald Turnbull, thank you very much for your super chat, buddy. Great show, Lady Sam and others. Oh, so she gets named and we just get called others now. Have you noticed, guys? You know, we're, we're down the pecking order now. It's Lady Sam and the others. Ah, oh, dear. It, that hasn't taken long, has it? Before she's she's yeah, taken yeah, over right, the roost. Paul, you're hanging on to that. Move Ah, uh, yeah, jab. Well, you know, just <laughs> clinging on by a thread. Right, let's do score <laughs> predictions, guys. Um, let Get them in the chat. Let us know what you think is going to be the score. Um, Sam, we'll start with you tonight. Uh, what's your prediction? I'm going optimistic. I think, uh, I think we can do it. I think we're going to get 2-1, and I want to see them both from Isaac. Oh. Both of them. Good evening, Doug. Hope you're well, buddy. Um, I mean, interesting. Billy, what are you going for? Lots of goals. Um, yeah. I think 3-2 Newcastle. Ooh. Entertaining game. And who's, who's your goal scorers? Yeah, I'd like to see a couple from Isaac as well. And yeah. I think Anthony, Anthony Gordon, after his international bow last, last Ooh, week, yes. I think he'll have a bit of confidence in him. So mm. I'll have him for one as well. Uh, John Adams has gone 3-1, Paul Taylor 3-0, Mike Elliott 2-1, Indigo Figure uh, says 4-3, Jordy Rick 3-1, Baz down under 2-2, two, two. Uh, Stephen Hack has gone 6-2 with Lascelles a thunder strike from 30 yards. Um, uh, Mac has gone 3-1 to West Ham, unfortunately. Uh, Jackie says 2-0 to the tune, Harpal doesn't like predictions, well, fair enough. Uh, tune Dave's going 4-1 to the tune. Uh, Connor, thank you for your super chat. Uh, how anyone ever done the Wings hospitality package in the Leasers stand? Any feedback going for the Spurs game? Yeah, don't expect Paul McCartney. <laughs> Are we all just marinating on, on Billy's comment there? Don't say marinating. That's as bad as the oh, Paul McCartney thing. Sam! Honestly, uh, Alex, what are you going for, bud? Uh, same as Billy in terms of idea. It's going to be high scoring goals, goals, goals. They're conceding, we're conceding, but we've both got very talented players up front. We're creating chances, so I think we'll win three um, two. I think it will be. I think Willock is is looking good for a goal at the moment. He gets himself in decent areas. He can't miss all of them. Uh, so Willock, I think Willock, Isak, Gordon for the three for us. I think they'll get one. Um, I think probably Paketa will get one because, because real life is scripted when it comes to, to NUFC. So I reckon Paketa will get one and Calvin Phillips will get one just because we've all mocked oh, him for the last six months. Yeah, yeah it, it, um, it, it, Just because it, it's just how it happens with us, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going 3-1. Um, I think we might... We, I, 
think we might concede early and then just go on and the, the crowd will roar us home, hopefully. Um, but I think I'd love to see Zach get a couple of goals, just uh, some special ones as well. And I do believe Gordon will score. I think he's on fire at the minute. I think his confidence is sky high. Um, and uh, he, he's certainly a guy that I'm looking forward to seeing on Saturday. Uh, but there you go. That is it. We'll just do the poll before we finish. Uh, so I did ask, uh, we've had over 600 votes on this. Uh, will the FA extend Tenali's ban? Yes, 52%, no, 48%. So really close on over 600 votes there. So thank you, everybody, for voting. Um, I mean, what do you reckon to that, Alex? It's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Just to see how close it is. Impressive that 52% of people can be wrong, isn't it? Oh, we, we all saw Brexit. No, it is wow, well, yeah. It, it, no, it, it's very close. At, at, at this point, I would say that's probably fair, fifty-fifty, because nobody really knows. I think I'm just in the camp of listening to the journalists because of the the weight they carry in terms of who they know. Well, I, just, I thought you said I'm, I'm I'm just a bit camp. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure where where this show's gone I mean, tonight. I, I, I think a fifty-fifty is fair in, with everything that's gone on. I think I think none yeah. of us know enough to even give a proper answer. It's a guess from all of us, isn't it, really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I'm Instead of just guessing, I'm going to try and use a bit of what the journalists have said to try and give an informed guess. If there is such a thing, I think it's more likely that he'll be fine. But yeah, yeah it's yeah. no idea. We're n nothing's dead certain, is it? Absolutely not. Uh, well, there you go, guys. Thank you very much for watching tonight. Don't forget, 7 p.m. tomorrow is TTR Friday. Um, where we get you guys on, we give away prizes. Uh, Billy uh, hopefully won't have the poo poos this week, and uh, we, we will be able to do the uh, the hosts quiz. Uh, but there will be more. Uh, somebody's just accused me of being more camp than RuPaul. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll ask Susan about that and see if I'm camp. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, the TDR Friday is 7 o'clock tomorrow. Um, but I am back live at 11 o'clock tomorrow in the morning with uh, the press conference reaction, see what's been said. Uh, don't forget Match Day Live back on Saturday. Midday start for a 12.30 kickoff. Uh, we will be doing the review of the game Sunday night at 7. So there's loads coming up on the Toon Review. Uh, so please get yourself subscribed if you've not already done so. Um, and uh, make sure you hit the bell, which will let you know. You all right, Billy? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just laughing at Alex. I don't know why he's laughing. <clears throat> what the hell? Have I missed something here? I don't know. Oh, I've just got memories of Jack accidentally saying Bre Brexit means breakfast, and it's oh, just God. funny. <laughs> Brexit means breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, th th this has been a wild show tonight. Uh, absolutely crazy. Um, to say we've gone off tangent a couple it's of times. It's Easter. It's accidentally turned well, into a Friday a bit early. Yes, yes I guess so. But uh, a barrel of laughs it will be tomorrow night. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, but get uh, don't forget to give us the thumbs up, guys, if you've enjoyed tonight. Thanks, mods. Thank you to all the super chatters and new members. Thank you to Alex, Billy, and Sam. And uh, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, but enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening. In the meantime, good night. Away the lads and lessies. Bumba and Jack Gonzalez.